You know, at one time, this was not a place that was acknowledged to exist. When I was a lieutenant in the U.S. Navy in the early 90s, I was flying F-14 Tomcat, and their primary mission was to shoot down the, you know, the Russian bomber. If we ever, you know, went to war, it was quite possible that we would have been, you know, fighting against one another. Seven years later, I'm. I'm training in Star City. Я военный летчик. Ну, с космонавтами я начинал работать с самой первой группой. С 89 года я занимаюсь наземной подготовкой, одеваю космонавтов. I never really imagined living here and spending as much time here as I have. You know, when that is my last time in, in Russia, I think it'll be a sad day. I don't know what defrost is in Russian. I don't generally cook in a flight suit, but I've been a slacker out here. Like someone cooks for dinner every night. I've been here a week and I haven't done anything yet, so I'm feeling guilty. Why not, right? I figured I'd let it cook all day while I'm in the simulator. Yeah, it's a unique place. <clears throat> I've been coming out here for 15 years now, though. Walking down this same path. I've seen some crazy things on this path. Star City is definitely different. It's got this quaintness and kind of, in some ways, trapped in, in time um, part about it. You know, a lot of the people that work here live here. In Houston, no one lives at the Johnson Space Center. Развитие звездного городка началось с 1967 года. Городок вначале назывался Зеленый городок. Не звездный, а зеленый. А планировали, потому что это было все секретно, дескать, чтобы никто не знал, что такое звездный. Королев в свое время так сказал. В космическом корабле не может быть я женщина, я мужчина. Там должен быть космонавт. И требования к ним одинаковые. Точно так же и если экипаж находится в полете, то ему не важно, какого государства, какое государство поддерживает 
какую политику. Они работают в одной команде для достижения одной цели. We knew very little about Star City. We knew that it was effectively the belly of the beast. It was the brain trust of the Soviet space program, very much like our Houston, our Cape Canaveral. And it was a place that was doing things more ambitiously and more successfully than we were. It was the place that gave us Gagarin. It was the place that gave us the Soviet dominance of the high ground of space. And it scared the daylights out of us. So very much has changed. In the modern world, there is exactly one ride to space for American astronauts, and that's aboard the Russian Soyuz. Courtesy of the technology we once feared, we once envied, and we once fought to learn about. Well, welcome to uh, GCTC, the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia. Yeah, it is a tight squeeze. I'm not very tall, and it makes me feel like I'm too tall. When you uh, can't move, it can be kind of excruciatingly painful. Um, but, you know, it's the price we pay for getting the fly in space. The flight is definitely starting to feel a little bit closer when you only have, you know, two training events left, basically, of two years and thousands and thousands of hours of stuff that I've done to get to this point. There's only uh, today and tomorrow left. So I talked to Terry uh, Vertz and Barry Wilmore on the space station last night and asked them, so so if you were me, what would you, what would you be doing right now, getting ready for launch? And they said, enjoy gravity. <laughs> So there's three crew members in here. The center seat is the Soyuz commander, Gennady Padalka. My seat is over there in the right seat, and that's the flight engineer number two. The seat I'm sitting in is for the main flight engineer, Misha Kornienko, that I'm gonna be on the space station for a whole year with. Scott is a very good friend and professional. Я считаю, что мне повезло, что мы летим вместе с ним, потому что у нас очень хорошие взаимоотношения, и мы очень много общались в течение подготовки. You know, I've known him for 15 years since I first started coming out here. I call him my brother from another mother. <laughs> yeah, he thinks that's funny. There is obviously tension between the, the U.S. and, and Russia, um, but it's not something that the crew members ever talk about. You know, we're not politicians, and we, we leave it to the, the politicians from our respective countries to, to do that for us. Я так думаю, что если запустить наших президентов хотя бы недельки на две в космос, то на Земле все дела бы уладились. For one, we're friends, and we don't want, you know, the politics affecting our friendship. But the more important reason is we rely on each other for our lives. Им долго придется летать. Они в течение года будут вместе. Вот. Но Практика показывает, что все равно люди каким-то образом надоедают друг другу. Well, you're in a small space with just a few people on the space station, and it's uh, pretty confining. Can't go outside. You know, you just can't take a break. You can't get away from, you know, other folks that are that are there. Um, 
you know, so you have to work really hard to, you know, figure out how you're going to relate to everybody and interact. And I mean, those things become very important when you're on a long duration flight like that. You know, space shuttle flights that I've commanded, you know, were relatively short, a couple weeks. Um, but a year, it's challenging. Вот этот хай-тек, который на станции, он, конечно, утомляет психологически, прежде всего. Скучаешь буквально по всему. По воде скучаешь, которая течет из крана, а не летает шарами. На природу просто окунуться в природу. По земле. Хотя она все время перед тобой. Самые такие обыденные вещи, которые мы здесь не ценим зачастую. Вот они там выходят на первое место. We cannot be on one side of a hill without wondering what's on the other side of a hill. If you ask why we go to space, you might as well ask, why do we dance? Why do we care about football? Who cares? It accomplishes nothing. It does nothing that keeps you alive, but it's part of the very reason you want to remain alive. And that, I think, is what space does in a larger and grander and more ambitious way than any other enterprise human beings can undertake. The training flow has not been that hard, but when you look back on it in retrospect, it's still a lot of work. And I'm definitely ready to, to get on with the real thing, you know? Enough of training, let's launch and, and start doing this for real again. <laughs>